going to be talk third segment. Sorry, we're going to be talking about here is AL storylines and just what's going on in the American League before spring training starts. Now we're going to start this off here with who else but the New York Yankees. Now we all know what the Yankees did this offseason, and that was trade for Juan Soto. It's uh, pretty hard to uh, do anything better than that. You've got one of the better players in baseball who's also the, a prospect's age. I mean, they gave up a lot to get him. I want to make that very clear. Drew Thorpe, really good prospect. Michael King, I think going to be a really good starting pitcher. Randy, uh, Randy Vasquez, Johnny Brito, good starting pitchers who are young. But you make that trade 10 times out of 10 to get one soda. You look at how bad their outfield was last year, specifically their left field, specifically their hitting. You had to do the sweat o trade. You had to ignite the fan base with a new with new energy. Um, you added Marcus Stroman, obviously, to solidify the starting rotation after trading some guys for Soto. Now, that's a little bit of an interesting fit because of his uh, history with the Yankees fan base. But he's a good pitcher. So if he can get past the uh, Twitter trolls, I think he'll be okay. Uh, Alex Verdugo, fine bat, uh, probably plays, probably starts for them. Uh, he has good defense, good hitting. Not much I'll say there. He's a good player. Uh, interesting major trade with the Red Sox, but I think we're in a different time with that rivalry with where the teams are. Uh, next, the Rays. Um, I think the biggest one for this is, unfortunately, how they're going to play without Wander Franco. Now, Wander Franco, I assume, is not going to play in the MLB ever again. He is accused of some not good things. We're not going to really get into it because of the legal situation. But with histories of things like him, of situations that he's found himself in, even if someone is found to be acquitted or to be found not guilty, let's say, um, they still probably don't come back just because of the seriousness of what he's facing and the allegations that are going on. He is accused of that. So you look at the race, they still have a very good team. You have stars like Isaac Paredes, like Randy or Rosarena. You've got some good players back in the glass now trade, like Johnny DeLuca, like Ryan Pepio. But you're missing your best player, probably forever. So you just have to rebound off that. Uh, Rainer Rose Reina has to step up. He has to be that star. He is a star, but he has to be even better now with Franco gone. Uh, they have some guys to replace uh, Franco. They have uh, Taylor Walls, who was the defense first guy. Not much with the bat, but uh, bring something there with the glove and a shortstop that is important, of course. Uh, it's a really tough division to try to win now without your superstar shortstop. But they got to do the best they can. This is the situation they've unfortunately found themselves in. Um, next, Toronto. Uh, Toronto had a really tumultuous, kind of disappointing offseason looking at it. They didn't have a bad offseason per se. They signed Yariel Rodriguez, who's an interesting player to watch, uh, coming over from Cuba uh, and the uh, NPB as well. Uh, Justin Turner, good solid DH. Kevin Kiermaier, fine depth player. But of course, they missed out on Juan Soto and Shohei Otani, who we thought it was a lock at, at earlier in their offseason that they would sign one of. So they had a disappointing offseason because of that, but they still signed some good players, like I said. So how are they going to rebound from that? Are they going to come together as a team? Are they going to be really good? Are they going to make the playoffs again? Of course, they missed it uh, last year. Um, they're in a really tough division now, especially with the Orioles just continuing to get better. The Yankees got better. Uh, I think they're above the Rays and the Red Sox right now, but... There's still a lot of good teams in the AL, which we'll get to. So it's just how are they gonna, how are they gonna fit, um, and how are they gonna play with uh, with missing out on Otani and Juan Soto. Baltimore, pretty clear here. How are they gonna repeat in the East, and will they? Uh, adding Corbin Burns certainly helps that. I didn't expect them to add a big pitch, add a big pitcher. Sorry, in the off season, but they did. They shocked everyone and out of nowhere just traded for one of the game's better players in Corbin Burns. Um, they have a really, really good young team. Not much else to say that. They won 101 games last year, and that was for a reason. Maybe they overformed a little bit. Maybe they won 101 again. But I would be surprised if they don't win at least 90. Gunnar Henderson, Adley Rutschman, Cedric Mullins, Dean Kramer, Kyle Bradish, guys like that, uh, adding on to Corbin Burns with the, with the team they have, they're going to be really good. And they're not only going to be really good this year, but really good for a long time with the team that they have. So I would look for them. Uh, can they repeat in the East? Are they the favorites right now? I would say they are. Um, so yeah, uh, with that, uh, that's what I'm looking for with uh, Baltimore right now. Uh, Boston. Boston, I think it's clear. Um, will they be good? 
I just think it's kind of uh, as simple as that, really. I'm not sure what their direction is. They're kind of trying to uh, bridge the gap of being in contention and kind of rebuilding, but I don't know if they're doing it very well. I wasn't a big fan of the Giolito signing, but in his press conference, he did say he sought out the Red Sox because of what they told him in his press conference. So maybe he knows something that we don't about what the Red Sox plans for him are. Uh, they traded for Tyler O'Neill, and that was kind of it. Uh, just haven't done much this offseason when they said they would be all in. So it's just really kind of interesting, and we don't really know what they're going to be. All their young players could completely outperform what we thought, and they could be they could uh, have a surprise one. They could win the East like the Orioles did last year, but I find that very unlikely. Uh, they could still sign a guy like Jordan Montgomery, but again, I find that unlikely. It's just very interesting to watch what's going to go on with the Red Sox and what's going to happen with them. Uh, next, going on to the uh, AL Central here, Minnesota, uh, the Twins, uh, the reigning champions in the uh, Central, will Buxton and Correa rebound? Now, Buxton, like most years, got hurt, uh, and he's going to be playing center this year. Uh, sorry, my apologies. Buxton did not get hurt last year, but that was because he was playing DH. Uh, and this year, he's going to be playing center again, and every single year of his career, he's gotten hurt. I don't like placing the label of injury prone on players, but unfortunately, that's what Byron Buxton has become in his career, injury prone. Now, if he stays healthy for 162, I mean, that's an MVP candidate right there. Nothing else to say. I mean, that's an MVP candidate, but it's just so unlikely. And if he can stay healthy, the Twins can be one of the better teams in baseball. Uh, Carlos Correa, he wasn't great at the start of the season and middle as well, but he showed some flashes that maybe he's going back to the old player we know of Carlos Correa at the end. So I think that's possible. I think if he rebounds, they can be really good, be a championship contender, make it to the second, make it to the second round like they did last year, maybe even further. Uh, so yeah, I think that's something to watch in Minnesota. Uh, Cleveland, kind of just what's their direction? Will they be good? Kind of same with the Marlins. They didn't really do much this offseason. Brought back Austin Hedges. Will, I'm sure Guardians fans are very happy with that. Uh, they have a, a good young team. They have a guy I really love in Kyle Manzaro. They brought over from Tampa last year in the Aaron Savali trade. But they still need more. Uh, if you're not good, you might look at selling off a guy like uh, Shane Bieber at the deadline. You know, uh, kind of bridging the gap and kind of getting more young and kind of getting uh, better in the future as well. So it's just kind of really interesting to watch what's going to go on with Cleveland. And I think they're just going to be really interesting and fun to watch. Uh, Detroit, Detroit. Uh, can their young core win the Central? They have a really, really good young team. They've been they've been rebounding a lot, and they're kind of about to see the fruits of their labor. Uh, you know, guys like Tarek Subel, uh, Spencer Torkelson, Colt Keith, uh, Parker Meadows, uh, Riley Green, really good young players that can be face of the franchise in Detroit for a little while, and hopefully they live up to the potential. Um. Next, you know, they added guys. They added Kenta Maeda, who they hope can bridge them into uh, the MPB market and the Japan market, which I think is a really smart move. Jack Flaherty, good, uh, good, uh, good pitcher who you know had a kind of a a down few seasons with St. Louis, got traded to Baltimore, wasn't any better. Um, so yeah, I think that's something to watch with that adding. Uh, Andrew Chafin, Shelby Miller, just two guys that are nice for the bullpen. Uh, they can definitely win the Central. The Central is just kind of mediocre with what we've seen in the last few years. So it's just something really interesting to watch. And can they fill their potential? Uh, the Royals, kind of the same thing here. Can they win the Central? And they've added a lot of new pieces. And can that help them win the Central? I mean, no one expected the Royals to do what they did. My, uh, Seth Lugo, Michael Michael Waga, Chris Stratton, Will Smith, Hunter Renfro, uh, Adam Frazier, just a lot of solid players they added to a team that has young guys like Bobby Witt, who they recently extended. Uh, Vinny Pasquantino, who's a good young player. MJ Melendez, good young player. So they have a lot of building blocks there in Kansas City, Missouri. And it's just the fact of now, can these uh, young players add on, can these new additions, sorry, add on to that and kind of make this young team um, really good and win this central? That's definitely winnable with what we've seen the past few years and what we've seen in the teams. Uh, do. Finally, in the central, we have the White Sox, and it's pretty clear. Will they trade Dylan Cease? Uh, I am shocked they still in the White Sox at this point. He's been he's been in trade rumors for a long, long time. But 
they apparently haven't gotten what they want for him. So they're keeping him. Um, I think they end up do. I think they do end up trading him by the deadline. Uh, Orioles seem to watch there. They've been mentioned a lot, even with Corbin Burns. They didn't really give up much of their uh, prospects because they just have such a sheer depth. And it's just to watch, you know, will they trade Dylan Cease? There's not, not really much else going on in the uh, south side for baseball. Their team's really, really bad. And kind of Dylan Cease is the only thing to watch right now. And his trade as well. Finally, going into the West, we're going to talk about the Astros. Uh, will they reclaim the uh, West? Uh, obviously, they did not. Uh, sorry. Will they repeat in the West? My apologies. Uh, obviously, they're not the kings of the West, even though they did win it, because the Rangers won the World Series. So kind of just be, going back to the being the top dogs that they were. Uh, they're kind of facing a really tumultuous season here. Alex Bregman, a franchise cornerstone for a long time, is going to be a free agent next offseason. I'd say it's kind of unlikely you bring him back with the guys you have to pay in the future and the guys you've already paid, like Josh Hader, like Jose Altuve. So it's kind of just maybe it's a little of a last dance with him and kind of a lot of the core with Correa already leaving, Springer already leaving, just saying goodbye to more guys. So, yeah, um, and they win the West, and can they go back to being the uh, – the Astros we all know, who always make the World Series, even though they didn't last year. Uh, Texas, can they defend their World Series crown? Uh, they have a lot of pitching injuries, which is going to make it hard, but if they bring back a guy like Montgomery, who I do expect them to, to bring back, uh, it can help solidify it. Jacob DeGrom, Max Scherzer, when they do inevitably come back, of course it will help them. So, of course, that helps. But they still have injuries to start the season, and um, of course, Seeker's out. Uh, we know we don't know how long and how that's going to affect them going into opening day, so it's just that as well. Uh, the Angels, how are they going to be after losing Otani? Probably not very good, but I think they bring in guys like JD Martinez, like uh, Blake Snow, who I mentioned before. So they might not be that horrible. It's just what's the direction of the team now? Are you going to try to win with this young core, which I don't think is impossible. I like the young core they have. I really do. Um, Robert Steves is a good. Bullpen arm, who's probably going to be a closer for a few years there. I really like that signing as well. Um, but it's just how are they going to perform after losing the best player in baseball? Again, probably not well, but I don't think they'll be awful. So it's just something to watch. Uh, Seattle, can they make the playoffs again? They have a really good young team. They have a franchise uh, cornerstone in Julio Rodriguez. They have a lot of good young pitching. Uh, Logan Gilbert, George Kirby. So can they make the uh, playoffs again? And can they kind of, you know... Can they kind of be that young, really good team we saw uh, two years ago and just put everything together? Lastly, we have Oakland. Uh, how will, it, will the young core take a leap? Uh, that's really all there is to look at in Oakland. Uh, J.P. Sears, Mason Miller, Ken Waldachuk, Shea Langoliers, Tyler Soderstrom, Seth Brown, Estery Ruiz, just young players they have. They're not going to be good, but if you're Vegas, sorry, if you're Oakland, they're going to be Vegas in a few years. If you're Vegas fans, I should say, because uh, they'll be your team really soon, you want them to take that leap. You want them to kind of have a core when coming there and kind of have a core right now in Oakland as well. Maybe try to see, trying to see if you can build something at all and kind of build off the backs of your young players and how they are performing. Uh, so just recapping, uh, I think that's what's really interesting right now in the AL. Uh, I think the big thing is just the Yankees with Juan Soto. Uh, you know, is he going to fold under the pressure? Um, I think that's something else to watch out for that I didn't mention. He's got a lot on his shoulders right now, being kind of the, uh, being in one of the biggest trades ever, going into the Bronx, New York. There's not many stages bigger than that in sports. Uh, I think he rises to it, but it's something interesting to watch, and it's going to be interesting to see if he rises to it or he flounders out and... The Yankees' entire season takes a different trajectory than we all expected. So that's it for AL storylines and what could go on there. Uh, our final storyline we're going to be talking about here is minor signings. Just recapping what's happened. Signings that are important and that add depth to teams, but are not really their own segment worthy. So we're going to have another break, but we'll be back with that right after it. And I'm excited to talk about it. So yeah, here we go. Let me talk third C.